Alan? Hello. That's better. Okay, let me tell you. Fantastic. How, How are you, are you doing, mate? How are you doing, Squire? I'm okay, sir. I'm a little bit late, man. No, no, don't listen. Sorry about the, the slight may mess up. I think what we didn't factor in when we organised this was uh, the bloody clocks went forward there on Sunday. <laughs> so I'm so sitting here at six o'clock and it's only one o'clock in Canada. So oh, uh, That's my fault getting the time wrong. Ah, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know. It's only when the wife told me on, Friday, on Sunday night that the clocks were going forward that I, I remembered as well. So listen, Dominic, I really do appreciate you taking time out to uh, to, to speak to me. Um, I'm going to keep it quick. I know you've only got about half an hour or something, you reckon, eh? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, fantastic. So um, I've I've tried to make it quite humorous. I'm sure you'll take it uh, in the sort of the spirit it's uh, in, intended. I hope you do anyway. <laughs> It's good stuff. So anyway, we'll, we'll just make a start. So hey, listen, uh, Dominic, thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, I'm delighted to welcome probably the most famous gaming icon, Purveyor, per, sorry, Purveyor of Fine Beards, Double Entendres, Sheepskin Jackets and King of the Putdown, Mr. Dominic Diamond. Welcome, sir. That's a, that's a wonderful eulogy. I like that. <laughs> I, I could that's sell it. I could do it for you for a price. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway, listen Dominic, thank you very much for taking time out to join me, I know you're almost a busy man, I think you're on here in about, is it five hours time, something like that, is it? In Canada, yes. As yes. it's, oh, I get, you know I always get my times confused. <laughs> it's, it's probably a Scottish thing mate, so don't worry about it, good stuff, so anyway, kicking, kicking things off Dominic, uh, a surname like that, you were surely destined for great things, don't you think? Do you know it's interesting you ask that Alan, because I... My real name is Paul Dominic Diamond. And yes. From early yeah. age, I decided that I wanted to be called Dominic instead of Paul because there was two other Pauls in the class. And I thought at the time it sounded really cool and show busy. But I think <laughs> the older I've got, the more I kind of, the more I hate my name. Because <laughs> it's really hard to say quickly on the radio. And right. It's, See, like when you come over to a new country when people don't know you've got to say hi it's dominic diamond and it's just like <laughs> i wish i called this but like paul diamond would have been so much easier <laughs> and i actually think paul diamond sounds cooler <laughs> than dominic diamond because dominic diamond as well sounds made up and nobody believes that it's a real name see like neil diamond was sensible because he had the diamond he kept the first name short and diamond, there's another great jim diamond they all well, kept First name short. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got a guy that works for me. His name is Desmond Diamond. So there you go. If you think you were bad with me, Dominic. Des Diamond. Des Diamond. Diamond. That's Des his name. Diamond. That's great. That's fun no, no relation, I take it, Dominic, no? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I know you've been in Canada. Is it, is it five years now? I think you've been in there? Across it's, there? Uh, do you know what? Actually, it's uh, it's nearly it's six. It's over six is years. Is it really? Now. Wow. January 2009, I came yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. now. Good stuff. Is there anything you miss about Scotland, like Iron Brew, deep fried Mars bar suppers, oh, pish weather? And I miss Iron Brew. Definitely miss <laughs> Iron Brew. And uh, I miss going to see the Celtic. Um, yeah. I miss mountains. Uh, we don't. There are mountains in Canada mm. somewhere, uh, but like I'm, I'm thousands of miles away from them. They're over like the west coast. So I do. I miss mountains. I miss yeah. the Highlands. That's the thing about living, I mean, I live in Livingston, which is obviously central Scotland, and uh, I mean, you're literally half an hour from, uh, or 40 minutes from Mulgai, you know, and then you're yeah. up in the West Highland Way, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic, so, um, good stuff. So, anyway, you hail from the home of this, the, the famous uh, smoked fish, the Smokey, uh, right. and am I right in thinking that you're probably our both most famous son? I can't think of I anybody th else. I think you might, I think uh, Andy Stewart, I think, was maybe from our Broth was he really? ah. singer. I know that, um, uh, oh, who was the, the great runner, Liz, um, Liz, Liz McCogan. McCogan. She was from close to Arbro, ah. I think she, just outside it. Right, but, uh, right. But yeah, it's not, it's not been a hotbed of, of superstars. <laughs> of talent. The, the people at Arbro, actually, apart from your family and close friends, the people, if you were to, I mean, the people are from Arbro know, know about you. I'm guessing anybody my age would probably, obviously, from Games Master, they? Oh, yeah, I, th I think that yeah. they, um, yeah, I think that they they like me all right. I'm still related to 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's you'd be difficult finding. Do you know what? The thing about a place like our bro, though, it's like um, everybody knows each other anyway. Right. So it doesn't really matter whether you've been on the telly or not. <laughs> it's where everybody's famous, you know. <laughs> Because everybody knows each other and everybody's related to someone somehow, and everybody went to school with each other. So uh, probably I probably know 90% yeah. of our. You know. That's probably 15 people you're talking about then, almost, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
the funny thing was, I was actually, I work, I go to job centres for a living, uh, oh. sort of doing inspections and that kind of stuff, and I was up in our both job centre, and uh, I was standing outside looking at the outside of the building, and one of the, the sort of DWP uh, government pe- persons came out and he started talking about football as you do. And uh-huh. I said, are you into football yourself? He says, yeah, I go to see our broth. I says, all oh, right, yeah. I says, you got a season ticket? He says, I'm actually the chairman. I went, oh, no way. <laughs> Seriously, he works in the job centre. Now, if that job centre is in the same place that it used to be... Charmer Street. That is right beside uh, my granny Diamond's house. Um, really? Yep, and uh, right beside one of the schools I used to go to, Lady Lone School. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, that's where the job centre was. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I can't see Alec Ferguson working in a job centre somehow. No, he might no. be right enough now that he's no way Man United, but you never know. <laughs> so, anyway, do you think they're, they're ever going to erect a large statue in our broth with your name in it? I think you deserve I, that. I, I, would like, I would like to think of a, a large erection of me uh, in my hometown. I think that's, that's, <laughs> well, that's definitely uh, justified, even, I would think. Even just a, a small erection would be... Uh, <laughs> When you get to our age, uh, Dominic, that you'll take anything. <laughs> the, the only problem is, because our both a seaside town, it would just be a place for the seagulls to shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only problem about statues there. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I believe you, you, did you start, now this is from Wikipedia, so it must be true. Um, I believe you started, uh, you, st- you studied drama at Bristol yeah. University, and you also attended, uh, uh, sorry, you also went to, obviously, university, was it David Williams, he was there as well, apparently? David Williams, Simon Pegg as well. They were yeah. Simon was in the same year as me. Yeah, uh, and we did a lot of the same courses together. Uh, David was in the year below me, but we did again. We did a lot of comedy stuff together. Yeah, and it was a, a lot of very talented people. I, and even yeah. even on the other side of the camera, like the um, uh, there's a guy called Richard Stokes who was the producer of um, oh the, the the brilliant TV drama with uh, Doctor Who in it with um oh geez I can't believe it. Uh, Broad, yeah. Broad Church. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, the producer of that, and so there's a lot of guys who ended up doing really, really well behind the camera from that year. It was, mm-hmm. it, was it was a pretty good year. It was a good, good creative bunch of people. Yeah, and you had a comedy troupe called David Ike and the Orphans of Jesus. Is that is that correct? Right, Dave, yeah, David Williams was in that. Simon Pegg was in that as well. <laughs> uh, Jason Bradbury, who went on to be an oh, I... on the Gadget Show. Yeah, uh, aye, aye. as well. Actually, that that was good. I I basically. Uh, wanted to set up because uh, I was doing a lot of stand up at the time uh-huh. and uh, just wanted a way that I could uh, make more money out of it and I, I so I put this on and it's amazing to think of the likes of Simon and Dave being in it because I completely fleeced them and I kept <laughs> all the money <laughs> I, kept, I kept all the door money and I gave them something like 20 quid and, uh, and kept the rest because it was like management costs and everything but it was, <laughs> we, we did some really really good shows and yeah. it was amazing I mean, I mean, David was always was always very good, but mm. Simon Pegg was just different class. You could just really? tell that. Yeah, yeah. He used, back then, he had um, he had a persona of a lifeguard poet, and uh, he would come on and he would do these wonderful, brilliant poems about his obsession with um, <clears throat> Diane Keaton and stuff like that. But <laughs> in between, he would be acting out as if he was at the pool, and he'd be blowing his whistle and telling people to stop heavy petting and stuff like that. And he, was, uh, he was just, he was a genius, you could tell. Very talented. <laughs> Whatever happened to these uh, no petting uh, signs you used to get in swimming pools in the 70s? It's almost allowed now because I don't see that anymore. No, I had not seen it for a while either. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't have them in Canada. I don't know whether that's because nobody ever did it or because they don't see it's a problem. I will test it out next time. <laughs> And you can let me know. Good stuff. Yeah. Excellent. Anyway, uh, Dominic, moving on. Uh, how did the Games Master gig come about? Maybe did that all kick off? It was uh, just an unbelievable slice of mm-hmm. of luck, really. I I was doing stand up and I was still at university, and then the uh, there was a TV show called The Word that was on, and oh, they yep. were, they basically had an open search for a new presenter for that. So I applied, got down to last twelve, and then uh, the people who were doing Games Master were a little bit cheeky. And they were in the same part of London as the company that did the ward. And they said, look, seeing as you've just interviewed, like, everyone, um, we're also looking for a new presenter. Can we borrow your notes? And um, is there anyone that you think would be right for this show? And luckily, one of the bosses there said, well, you know, there's this guy who was, um, you know, far too physically unattractive to get a job on the ward, but he might be right. I don't believe that for a second. (laughs) So, yeah, so then I just, I went along and met them and did an audition uh, in in the church that we ended up using for series one yeah. comment on uh, it was a uh, 
Oh, it was a terrible football game played on the Game Boy. That was what my audition was, was coming <laughs> on the game. Played on the Game it was Boy. It blurred. You couldn't say anything. <laughs> That's it. And the thing is, and I think even then, uh, I, I was using the, the innuendo in the waggling joysticks and all that. I think that just, <laughs> for some reason, that just always seemed like the right way to go with that. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. I must admit, I mean, always as, a, as a, an avid fan of games, much like anybody yeah, in my age group, I mean, it was quite, when it first started, when, you know, the, the accent came out, we're like, Christ, this guy's Scottish, you know, you just automatically assumed it was going to be somebody English, but, you That's know. That's an interesting point, actually, there, there wasn't yeah. a lot of Scottish people on China, on TV back then, because even the likes of, the, I think Nicky Campbell had maybe just started at Radio mm. 1, but the likes of Carol Smiley, n none of them, I think, were kind of, were particularly big Mm -hmm, nationally mm -hmm. on TV yet, um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's interesting, that. I never thought yeah, of that. Yeah, there we go. So, anyway, yeah, there was always a few other video game shows out there at the time, there was Bad Influence, which was like the little kid who always did his homework in time and got good uh, exam results. <laughs> um, games World was the only uh, child kid that was spoiled with the best clothes, but it was actually a complete dick who nobody really liked. And I think we could probably say Games Master was a likeable kid who dogged school on occasions, sniffed glue and had sex at 14 that's behind the school PE block. Do you think that kind of sums it up? That is, that's one of the most <laughs> wonderful summations of the three shows I think I've ever heard. That's absolutely, that's superb. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Excellent, good stuff. And what, I mean, obviously it was a massive success. It was, it was at seven, well, sorry, there was, there was six good series, which we'll come to later on. Uh, why, why do you think it was as successful as it was, Dominic? Uh, I think because we didn't have anybody at any senior level in Channel 4 checking the show. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, we really didn't. It was weird. that We, we yeah. came up to the sports department of Channel 4, bizarrely, and uh, and the guy, the, the head of sport, would never never watched it. So they would just pa they would just pass it. So as a result, we, we kind of got to bend rules and we got to be kind of quite surreal and creative. And I just think we got a level of freedom uh -huh. that I just don't think you normally get in TV shows and we were just we were very lucky and we also had uh, again there was a phenomenal backroom team and a, a lot you know a very young team and just a, a lot of really clever really hard working people mm -hmm, that um, mm -hmm. came up with some good ideas when drunk and off their face <laughs> drugs <laughs> so that's and yeah see I think I think the whole adult theme that ran obviously you know the undercurrent of the whole program that's what made it so enjoyable I mean you, I, I must admit having watched look watched can you watch the rerun but not reruns I've downloaded them off the internet um, it's quite it's incredible just how many actually managed to get in there you know in, in half an hour Oh yeah, it's quite it's quite ridiculous. Uh, looking back, now. <laughs> it's uh, you know it's it's brilliant. I think it was great. I think we were we were very successful, but lucky. Luckily, we were not too successful. Yeah. I think if we had any more viewers, then people might have started noticing I stuff, especially parents, and then we might have got into trouble. But it was good. We were just big enough, but not too big. <laughs> yeah, there's another. You got another one in there right away. Fantastic. <laughs> Good stuff. I mean, uh, does it surprise you now, Dominic, that obviously you're still, I mean, at this little sort of uh, feature that I've been doing, um, you were probably the most uh, desired person for me to actually interview. I mean, you're obviously a sort of gaming icon, you, you always will be. Um, I mean, does it surprise you that people still want to talk about Games Master and video games and waggling joysticks and whatnot? I think it, um, it's... I mean, it, it makes me feel great. It, it's yeah. great to, to do something that has that kind of legacy. I find it, it's it's a little bit of a shame that it, it shows the dearth of gaming TV shows that there's been since. You know, that, that there is yeah. anything. It's like people, you know, still talking about NYPD Blue as a cop show. It's like, <laughs> yes, it was good, but since then you've had, you know, CSI and NCIS and everything, mm -hmm. but it just seems that there's been nothing mm -hmm. since Games Master, really, that, that, has, that people have managed to attach themselves to, which is a shame, but... Um, I mean, that's that's British television bosses. Yeah. Because yeah. other, other countries do. I mean, America's always had video game shows and everything running, but it's just there uh, for some reason, you it's, know, Britain doesn't. Yeah, I mean, they reckon that the, the gaming industry brings in, like, more money than Hollywood, and yet there's not a single, um, you know, program on TV about it. It's just no, and I, I, it's I don't think, and I don't think there will be now, because I think yeah. that audience is so spectacularly overserved by the internet now and by YouTube. I think, um, yeah. 
that it's just that there would be no reason for anybody to watch a Games Master now because mm-hmm. every single aspect is just... Co- I am just <laughs> gobsmacked by the amount of stuff on YouTube about games and, you know, right. and game humour and everything. It's just that, you know, I love, like, when people will take things like Halo and revoice it and make comedy skits out of it. That's <laughs> fantastic. All that stuff. That's great, you know? Good stuff. I mean, do you... So, yeah, you've obviously answered my next question. You don't think that kind of format would work nowadays? I, no, I don't think there's a need. I don't really think yeah. there's a need for it now. Um, you know, I, I mean, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I mean, they had they had the chance recently when Future Publishing bought the rights for the TV show mm. uh, off of Jane Hewland, and oh, they, really? yeah. they, tried, they tried to get it uh, remade, mm. and they publicly, mm-hmm. they publicly said from the beginning that it, they weren't going to involve me, which was a little bit naughty of them. Um, but they, but nobody wanted to do it. Nobody wanted to pick up the show. So uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. It's, uh, that just kind of confirms what you're talking about. The internet's really yeah. taking over everything now, so good stuff. So you've already mentioned this. Uh, watching reruns, I'm amazed at how many double entendres and innuendos that you're managed to put in. Obviously, some are pretty near at the knuckle um, who are misses. Uh, obviously, most of your audience and participants were completely unaware of what was being said. I mean, <laughs> watching back some of them and you're coming out, you're saying to wee kids, oh, you're going to go upstairs and wag with your joystick in your bedroom and the kids, his eyes were glazed over, he was completely unaware of what you're actually saying to him. Um, I, did, were you guys ever worried that you're going to get complaints or did you realise, wait a minute, we're getting away with this, let's just keep going and let's take it as far as we can possibly take it? I think that's interesting because I... Again, I don't think you could get... Well, I know you couldn't get away with that stuff now because of <laughs> post, you know, Jimmy Savile and Operation... <laughs> I, I think that they, you know, little did I know that I was the only guy Kelly, who wasn't a paedophile. Uh, and, and, uh, and I think the horrible side of that, I don't think you could you could make innuendo stuff like that now in front of young people because you just you would you wouldn't get more than one episode so um <laughs> we just we were lucky that we lived in a more innocent time then Aye, absolutely so, i'm guessing if, if games master went out at eight o'clock on a friday night on bbc one then it would have to have been completely tamed down and you would have probably got the sack and they would have brought in uh, vernon key or something eh? That's right. Yes, <laughs> yes, they would have been. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that, or, or, or Jeremy Clarkson or, or someone like that. I hear he's looking for a job apparently. So uh. do you know? Do you know the, my Clarkson story? And this is, uh, and I, I've been telling it to a few people over here in Canada because Top Gear's massive over here. Top yeah. Gear and Coronation Street are two of the biggest TV programs in Canada. Right? It's completely bizarre. So, um, and people kept saying to me, "Oh, so you know? Did, did you know Jeremy Clarkson?" And I said, let me tell you my Jeremy Clarkson story. Years ago, the BBC came to me with an idea for a TV show called Robot Wars. And I was like, oh, yeah, this sounds great. Like, we really want you to present it, Dominic, because of Games Master. Yeah, it sounds great. So we did the pilot for the show we did as a live performance in a warehouse opposite the BBC <laughs> in front of all the BBC executives. And it was one of the toughest things I ever had to do in my life technically and I did it and we nailed it and they commissioned it and mm-hmm. I was like oh this is great and then I get the phone call saying yeah the BBC uh, think they want a bigger name so they're giving it to Jeremy Clarkson instead and they Jeez. took it and that show came huge <laughs> <laughs> that's my Jeremy Clarkson story bastard <laughs> unbelievable dear me <laughs> yeah <clears throat> excuse me um Let's see, I've heard in a previous interview that, you, um, that Channel 4, obviously, but again, you've mentioned this, that Channel 4 had no idea as to the actual content, and they were no. probably just interested in the, the sort of uh, soaring uh, rating viewers. They, sorry, so the, yep, they were happy because they were pulling in the ratings. Eh? Yep, they were, yep, they were happy. We got, we got great ratings. They didn't really understand um, how or why, but they, they just thought, oh, it's video games, and, and video games are really huge, so let's let them carry on. They were getting tons of money from the Games Master Club and everything like that, and then Games Master Live, so it was a great cash cow for them, and then they and then they started to try and use us to help the other shows, like we were moved, and this was, right. and I was really unhappy, we got moved to before Brookside, not Brookside, um, Hollyoaks, that was it. We oh, were right. Dear me. Yeah. Six till six o'clock, and that made a big difference to our ratings, because just that extra half an hour means more people are home from school and from work. And we were put in there as a warm-up to Hollyoaks, which was really annoying at the time. It was great for Hollyoaks. Mm. <laughs> but it was, you know, unfortunately, we, we took a ratings dip on that, and we didn't really come back from that. Yeah. Point. I'm, I'm no doubt some of the Channel 4 executives would have probably looked back at some of the reruns of uh, Games Master after it kind of went off air and went, did we say it's allowed us? <laughs> Who allowed us? <laughs> I have no doubt. I have no doubt at all. <laughs> 
Excellent. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Obviously, the guests who appeared on, uh, you know, Games Master over the years, it's like a who's who's of 90s Britain, from Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, to Danny Bear, um, Utah Saints, to Bad Boys, I think, who were they again? Um, did you ever, did you actually get to sort of decide who came on the show, or was that kind of decided for you? Oh, no, we we would all sit and all kind of throw in names that we... Uh, we thought would be good uh, uh-huh. footballers, especially in that we were always, you know, we were really, really keen on getting them. I don't think there was, there was never a. I'm trying to think if there was ever a guest we had on that I had said beforehand. No, I do not want these. The only, no, the only time I was against the guest was when we did that stupid one where we had the the fake Robocop and the fake John Major and <laughs> I remember that one I, did you all come like, on in a boat or something I think <laughs> I remember going oh no this is a really shit decision and actually the <laughs> we were saved by how bad uh, that they were in terms of us lookalikes and soundalikes so like that saved us because it was so bad it was good in the end but I, um, I think I was I kind of didn't think it was very cool to have take that on at the time, but, I mean, they were fantastic. They were great guys, and that was, you know, probably the biggest guests that we ever had on the show. Oh, so, I, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think it's, it would be interesting because <laughs> I think that to, if the show was out today, I think the calibre of guests you would get would be mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking you could get Messi on. If they were launching FIFA, you know, you, the, the caliber of football player you would get, that would be brilliant. It would be, that, that's actually, that would be, that's the biggest shame of it not being on just now. I think I, the I, is a great guest. <laughs> get lost, you know. Go, going through uh, all the sort of games, I didn't physically watch them all, but all my weekend kind of Games Master Files have got names and, as to who appeared. I noticed uh, Vinnie Jones appeared four times. Was it because <laughs> he was a class act or was everybody simply too shit scared to tell him to piss off? No, Vinny Jones would uh, <laughs> Vinny Jones would do anything, right, if you gave him the money. Vinny Jones literally used to answer his phone, and instead of saying hello, he would say, How much? <laughs> <laughs> so it would be, we'd get to the stage where it would be like, okay, right, which footballers are we going to have on? How about Vinny Jones? Oh, we can't, listen, we can't have Vinny on again, right? Okay, fine. <laughs> so we'll book, we'll book four others, and then on the day it'll be like, oh, shit, Andy Cole's <laughs> dropped out or whatever. Okay, you know what that means? Yep. Just feel it out in your wallets. How much how much cash have we, we got? Let's have a whip round and phone up Vinny Jones. How much have we got in the petty cash? Oh, that'll be enough. Vinny, Vinny Jones, without a shadow of a doubt, made more money than anyone else on Games Master. Probably more than me. I can always remember seeing him. I can't remember what game he was playing in one of the first challenges. And the wee guy that he was playing looked genuinely terrified if he beat him. Oh, he's a, he's a scary guy. It's he funny, does look but- scary. Uh, I, uh, my kids were hugely impressed. My kids are, are too young to uh, to know Games Master. I mean, they know of it now. But my two youngest, who are nine and ten, and we were watching the TV show Arrow. Oh, um, I I. And Vinny Jones was in that recently. He had like a three-episode arc as a major bad guy. And my kids were so impressed. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, I had him on my old show. No way, you had someone who's a bad guy on Arrow on your show? <laughs> <laughs> But he is, he's scary. He's he's a very scary. He does look pretty pretty mean. Um, who is the biggest twat celebrity guest? The motivator. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Like, motivator, what, what, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Really? Why? Why was that? Because he was just ridiculous a, uh, outfit, or was it something else? You know, I think the, I think the problem is is that when you dress like that, you would expect someone to have more of a sense of humour. But right. he was just the most humourless, grumpy bastard in the world. Really? Oh, yeah. cam- oh, he was just. You know, and then the minute the camera went on, he'd be all smiles and everything. And then when the camera went off, just sullen. Just completely and, false. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was, it was, as you can imagine, it was a very happy set to be on. <laughs> and then just this little kind of totem of grump. <laughs> little, <laughs> the motivator. So, uh, yeah, no, he wasn't, um, he wasn't my favourite. So he never came, you never emptied the petty cash to get him back then, I take it. No, we didn't. <laughs> So there was always a lot of top toy appeared in it over the years. Um, oh, yeah. Especially, what was the famous one? Was it um, riding a? Oh, she's married to Fat Boy Slim. Oh, Zoe Ball. Aye, was she oh, not on a, a large motorbike? I think. Oh, Zoe Ball <laughs> doing MotoGP. Oh my God, that was great. <laughs> what was great about that was because I I knew Zoe at the time because uh-huh. I had um, 
done something on the radio with her, and then I'd actually just auditioned for The Big Breakfast at that time with her. Mm -hmm. So uh, she knew the show, and we knew each other, and, and I knew she was up for it, and I'd said to her, look, let, well, let's... Let's. I'm going to really push the naughtiness on this one, if uh, <laughs> if that's okay with you. She's like, yeah, no, it'll be cool. So that's how when she, the, the let it was something about riding on the back, and she was like, oh yeah, I like I like one up the back, and it was just unbelievable levels. That was, yeah. I think the innuendo uh, scale went up to 11 for that episode, if I recall. You're basically doing anal sex gags with one of the biggest stars the channel has. Then you know <laughs> you've, you've made it. <laughs> Was there any like memorable contestants? I can always remember there was uh, this little guy. He brought in his own a variety of his homemade joysticks, depending on what challenge he was going to get. And I think he absolutely failed miserably. Oh, I don't know if you remember him. I don't remember that guy. I remember um, Martin Martin Mathers. Oh, was that the James Bond character? Yes, <laughs> yes. Doing the uh, I can't remember what the shooting game was at the Virtual time. Cop, I think it was double handed. Eh? That was phenomenal. That was absolutely brilliant. My my favourite ever challenge, though, was, and this was uh, season two, actually, was when Jimmy White had to clear up on a real snooker table quicker than the computer did on Jimmy White's whirlwind That's snooker. That's right, I remember that one. And I thought that was, that for me was the perfect challenge. It was the real kind of, you know, man versus machine thing. You're right. Yeah. And it was, that was fascinating from on so many levels. That was like, that was my favourite challenge. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. How much uh, sort of practice were the contestants given? Did they get a, a wee shot of the game beforehand, or was it? Can you, did they go in blind? Oh no, 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 no! Because a lot of them knew weeks before and everything. Oh, that that's what they, right, they, right. Uh, so, um, you know, I think it would depend. If it was like a newer game, then they wouldn't. But by and large, no, they they they'd know what they were doing. They knew what they'd done. Uh, good stuff. Were any? Was there ever like, a challenge where somebody failed and they thought, "Nah, fuck it, we'll, we'll redo it so that he wins," or vice versa? Was there any challenges fixed at all? Or? Well, I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> <laughs> it might it might not be too outlandish if I if I said that that time Uri Geller was on pretending to oh. play the game just using the power of his mind. <laughs> that might not have been a hundred percent genuine. It might have been a researcher underneath the game playing it for him. <laughs> it was like these uh, like Saturday Superstore. They used to have these like video game challenges, and I always thought it was incredible that somebody could control it by saying left. Right, down, <laughs> up, and there was always that resetting delay, not realising there was a guy, a monkey with a joystick pushing it to the response. <laughs> That's right. Well, the, I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, yes, you, you would sometimes, not, not as often as, as you would think, there would be occasionally we would, like, we would redo a challenge, because at the end of the day, it was about providing good television. <laughs> if, you, if you've got three people trying to, you know, collect so many rings on Sonic, and, and they all die within seven seconds, then that's going to just be shite TV. <laughs> so you would redo it then. But if we, ever, if we ever did anything like that, and say the result went the other way, yeah. you'd always make sure that the person who won originally would get a golden joystick as well. And we'd, right, you know, we'd right. yeah. Do you actually own a golden joystick, Dominic, or were they all used on? I have one. I, I, I can't believe why I didn't take one. You never got one. Oh wow! Well. I never ever got one. Uh, so it's a, it's a shame that actually. I wish I had, but no, I don't. Have <laughs> and am I right in thinking they were just literally like was it quick shot two joysticks painted right. gold or something? Was it painted gold? That was it. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um, am I right in thinking that you never actually met um, the games master himself, Mr. Patrick Moore? I did, on the very, very last day of filming, I met him. I met him once, and it literally was I was walking out, he was walking in. Um, and uh, I spoke to him uh, for about five, ten minutes uh, about cricket, because uh, he was a big cricket fan. And there was something perfect about that, because it was just, it was nice. It was a really nice little kind of right. moment. I genuinely was. I was very sad when he died, yeah, because, yeah. you know, I I kind of felt really close to him all the years. And the amount of messages I got on Twitter and Facebook. Really? Off condolences to me i was touched I, I, I was touched for two reasons one as to how many people were mourning the loss of him because a games master as yeah. well as at this this guy at night mm -hmm. but also just how people were offering me their condolences and it just it was i, I it was a really really sweet moment I really was. Indeed, I. <laughs> excuse me um obviously uh you, you you moved away after Channel Eight, sorry, after Series Two. Was it? Well, am I right in thinking? Was that down to the decision they wanted to take uh, McDonald's on as their, their main sponsor? Yes, that yeah, was that. Yeah. Me about it, and uh, I uh, was very anti McDonald's at the time for 
you know, reasons that you all have when you're young and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. firebrand. Um, it was a very naive decision in retrospect because that's that's the way it, it's in it. Because sponsorship was just starting to come in in TV, mm-hmm. but like you could take a stand like that these days. It's just that, you know, everything is sponsored. I mean, I do, you know, I, I, I do commercial radio where, you know, there's ads for all kinds of companies that I would I, I, use or agree with, but it's just, you know, mm-hmm, it's just mm-hmm. something else. You know, I thought it was a cool, principled thing to do at the time. Well, fair play. You actually, you stood by your your uh, your reasons, you know, and you, you obviously turned down the turned the third one down. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Mister uh, Dexter Fletcher. Uh, I mean, he was always on a hiding to nothing, uh, trying to fill your boots. I mean, I remember watching it. And it was just uh, no disrespect to the guy. I've never, obviously, you know, I've never seen the guy before, but he just he was never ever going to fill fill your boots. No, and I th- I think it was. I think it was an interesting choice yeah. because he was so Cockney and you think <laughs> about the, the Scottishness and the accent. So I think that, um, you know what Scotland's like, where it's so unbelievably supportive of yeah. any Scottish person doing anything. So I think that <laughs> every single Scottish Games Master fan immediately went, oh, who's this fucking English prick? <laughs> so I would have been interested to see if they'd got another Scottish person, it might have been better. Or even <laughs> said to Dexter, because he's a very good actor, Okay, here's the deal, Dixon. You've got to do it in a Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> then I think, but it was just, oh, I welcome the guys, <laughs> you know? and, the, and the less said about his uh, green bloody onesie, well, you know, but anyway. Well, well, I'm the last person to talk about outfits worn on. <laughs> I deliberately wasn't going to mention that, but anyway. So anyway, you seem to have an uncanny knack of uh, sort of uh, taking the piss out of contestants' attire or hairstyles. Mostly uh, without any comeback, although I'm sure there was one wee guy, I think you had a go at him with his hairstyle, and I think he can you had a wee go back about your dress sense, or your hair, can you remember that one? I could not, I, I've obviously <laughs> psychically blotted that, psychologically <laughs> blotted that out, that's too hurtful. You <laughs> took him down to the basement and got him shot forthwith, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what became of the red, uh, red uh, sorry, the red jacket, did you keep well, that? that- well, that was no. That was the other thing that was bad was that they they burned it. And uh, on the what first, that? the very first episode, Dexter Fletcher did. He held up my burnt jacket and said, "This guy's burnt out." <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was really. And I think even and Jane Julian, the boss, will look uh, back look back on that and was like, "Do you know what? Actually, we shouldn't have done that." That, that was. was a, so I think they were they were understandably a bit pissed off that I'd taken there. So that was the real. That was the red jacket they burned. It was Unbelievable. The red they burnt, yeah. I'm going to write a letter to complaint to Channel 4, I think, and that's terrible. <laughs> Aye, uh, do you still, obviously, there was, there was multiple presenters, etc. Do you still keep in touch with them at all, you know, even this, through the sort of social media and that kind of stuff? I mean, Kirk Ewan, he was one of my favourites, obviously. He was kind of the, the king of deadpan, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, Kirk, Kirk was one of my best friends then, still one of my yeah. best friends now, and, you know, my, my kids and his kids and everything, I, you know, grew up very close. Mm-hmm. Uh, Johnny Finch, who was the producer, who, who wasn't one of the commentators, but he was one of the producer. Uh, I still keep in touch with him, Rick Henderson as well. I'm still oh, I, on yeah. Facebook, and uh, and a, a lot of them, and even the likes of you know, like a lot of the reviewers, like Julian Rignall and Frank O'Connor and all that. I'm still in touch with all those guys on. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing with social media now. It's impossible not to get yeah. in touch with these guys. The only so. person, the, the only person that how I would love to be in touch with who I'm not is Derek Lynch. I've no idea where Derek is, and he was just the funniest, happiest, smiley. He, he was in like the Namco or something, was it? That's right, yeah, from Aye, aye, I remember him. Aye. It's great because what was great about Derek was Derek just honestly just couldn't stop laughing. Like, <laughs> you would say it right, honestly, Derek, uh, listen, uh, it's very flattering, mate, that you're laughing, but we've got to like do a TV show as well. So it's just like laugh a bit and then just try and carry on. But he would just fucking lose it. He would corpse all the time, Derek. <laughs> we'd have to retake stuff because, you know, you said, did you ever have to retake any challenges? Uh-huh. Yeah, sometimes only because Derek kept laughing too much. <laughs> 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 Obviously, we, we, we've got to touch on uh, a certain Mr. Uh, Dave Perry. Um, uh, now, I, I did, I did uh, listen to an interview you did with, I think it was a bunch of Australian guys actually a couple of years ago, and you kind of admitted that you felt a little guilty about kind of what happened in that episode, that he was kind of perceived, perceived to be the kind of bad person. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't feel sorry about what happened in that episode because I think <laughs> that Dave's behaviour brought that on himself. I feel sorry, ge- I mean genuinely, how... Mm-hmm. Uh, how badly I I slagged off that guy, and especially in interviews and him like that, and it was just it, I I wasn't a particularly 
there was not there was some not nice parts of me back then as a as a human being, uh, not helped by a sort of substance abuse problems. <laughs> uh, and I, I think I said some absolutely despicably horrible, unforgivable things about that guy, uh, which were just b- basically bullying. And uh, and I feel very, very guilty about it. But he was a dick. <laughs> and so, you yeah. know, that deserved everything that happened on that show. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. He brought that all on himself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was obviously like many people watching it, and when he failed, I mean, he just he threw his toys at the pram. He had his weak and he hissy fit. Um, I mean, the and funny he, thing is, looking back now, and you know, through sort of road color spectacles, I mean, you, you know, he was a complete arse. You know, you know, really the way he sort of bigs himself up, and you know, he was he was one of like the sort of uh, the top hundred uh, most eligible bachelors and all this kind of shit. Um, but you know. Guys like him were probably good for the industry back then. I mean, it, it kind of gave you the goodie and baddie type thing. You know, you, just would, you wouldn't get sort of colourful characters like him anymore, I wouldn't think. But I just, but the worst thing was, I, I, I just wish, I think if David had been a bit more aware of that and had actually uh. been to kind of laugh at himself or send himself. But the biggest crime on that show was taking yourself seriously. And you know, <laughs> unfortunately he did because, he, you know, he was just all about this games animal brand and everything. And, you know, and it just, uh, it's... Aye. So it wasn't even a character that he portrayed, Dominic. You actually carry this persona into real life as well, then? That was Dave. Oh, right, that, right, I see. Hi. That was Dave, unfortunately. <laughs> but no, I, w- I wish I could go back and unsay a lot of the horrible things I, I said about him. But, okay, anyway, these things happen. Um, yeah. What prompted Channel 4, uh, Hewland, etc., to call it a day after Series 7? What was the reason behind that? Well, they... We'd actually called it a day after Series 6, right? And and we were like, because we wanted to go to a later time slot because we were like, we thought we'd done everything we could. Mm-hmm. And it's getting really hard to think of new settings for the show. And <laughs> um, so we'd said to Channel 4 we wanted to move to a later time slot and do a more adult take on it and, and kind of stretch things that way. And they said no. So we were like, well, okay, then that's it. And they literally called up. And said, uh, oh, we're just checking on the, you know, delivery dates for the first episode of season seven. And we were like, well, we're not making a season seven. They're like, oh, (laughs) no, we actually, (laughs) this is just the pair. There's so many things in the Games Master history that are just so perfectly random. And, and, Uh, (laughs) you know, I mean, you know, things like, you know, me leaving and Dexter Fletcher coming. That's all such a hugely important part of the Games Master. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Just for the final chapter to be. The last series was actually never supposed to happen. Channel 4 forgot to cancel it. That was basically <laughs> it. They forgot to cancel it. I'm bringing them in the channel that never watched any of the shows. That was just the ultimate sign to us of how little they cared. They cared so little they forgot to cancel the thing. So we, we had to literally get together and at yeah. short notice think, okay, right, how are we going to do this 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 final show? And I, I mean, how we managed to come up with that huge big desert island set <laughs> such a short space of time because it was probably the biggest most ambitious set because we had to yeah. build it all from scratch normally a lot of the stuff we we had existing frameworks in the location but this was just a bare studio mm-hmm. so uh, you know i think people some people will say you know oh well the last season was a bit self-indulgent or was a bit that well it's because you know, we knew it was the last one, and we were just Aye, like, we're "All guns blazing." <laughs> you know, let's just let's just have a laugh. I mean, I personally think I think every single one got better and better and better and better. Probably because it got more kind of laddish and that kind of stuff. But I certainly thought they got better. So. Yeah, no, I think so. I, I mean, yeah, I certainly yeah. got more and more comfortable with it, <laughs> and it you know, over over time. And and yeah, I think it was more. I think what was great without sounding too wanky, I think we would take some of the kind of like references, like lit, bizarre, obscure literary references we would throw in. I just think we really, I really tried to push it script wise with it and make it more and more random and weird. And, and, uh, and it's great. And again, it's really, um, you don't get many opportunities to do that. No. Yeah. Uh, so it was, uh, it was great. I, I loved that last series. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, so I've, obviously after that, can kind you of finished there, uh, you went on to do, various other programs including you did was it Caledonia McBrain I was trying to do that from memory was that a, a, a quiz show where what's his face Jim McCauley or something not Jim McCauley Fred, Fred McCauley. McCauley Jim McCauley was in the Beach Grove Garden wasn't he that was yeah that was uh, Scotland's attempt to kind of do a uh, have I got news for you <laughs> uh, they, they did they did one season and it tanked uh, uh-huh. Jim White was presenting it so then they um, BBC Scotland uh, I didn't know this at the time they'd already cancelled it they said oh no but we're, we're committed to a second series so they got me into that second series, and uh, yeah, I mean that that was fun. It was yeah, great. Yeah. 
with uh, with Fred and with Karen Dunbar, who would I mean, oh, she was just fantastic. And one of the best things about that show was it was the first time I'd ever been in a a, a writing room set up um, right. where you sit each week and write topical gags with a team of writers, and we mm-hmm. had. Um, uh, uh, Ricky Brown, uh, who was writing, it was a columnist at the Sun. We had Noddy, um, sh- I can't remember Noddy's name, but we also had a, a fresh-faced, up-and-coming comedian by the name of Frankie Boyle. <laughs> and those <laughs> afternoons in the writing room with Frankie Boyle, as you can imagine, were some of the greatest moments of my life. <laughs> just, he was just, uh, he's, a, he's a genius. He's an absolute legend. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. He's, when he wrote the foreword to my book, um, and when he agreed to do that, and I was so happy. And he, would just, he would, it's funny because Frankie would have days where he would, you would just like all his punchlines would be about mythological creatures, mm-hmm. and you'd be like, "Oh, Frankie's on a mythological day," and it doesn't matter what we'd be talking about. <laughs> his punchline would be genetically altered mermen, or you know, <laughs> the Minotaur. <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> So uh, was, uh, that was a lot of fun. I wish I wish we did more seasons of yeah, that. Yeah, that's a shame. <clears throat> Obviously, you, um, you reappeared uh, on our screens. I mean, it was always a very kind of sort of it wasn't well known uh, Bravo channel uh, when games attack. Yes. Um How how did that gig come about then, Dominic? That was the sa- same team behind Games Master. Really what was involved. it really? Was it Hewland again? Aye. It's, well, it was two of the main guys. It was uh, producer Johnny Finch and the uh, chief researcher. Um, Richard Wilcox, and they were at, uh, I can't remember the name of the production company, and so they spoke to me about doing another, you know, another show, and uh, and yet again, that was unbelievable fun, we had a completely free reign to do what we liked, <laughs> um, some ridiculous foreign shoots uh, that we, we went on. Was and, that the one where, was that, I can't remember if it was that, or Games Master, where you went to like a Japanese indoor beach? And you were talking to the wee guy, you had your Celtic top on, you are talking to the wee guy about it, you hear it pull birds and he didn't understand a word you were saying. That was, that was Games Master, that, but that was one of my favourite bits in games. And we would always stick up these stupid subtitles and everything underneath. And well, what, was that the one you, you had to present a prize for cosplay? There was these people right. dressed up in, like, with socks on their head and things like that, was it? It was pants, girls' pants. Yeah, on the, that's right. Panty man, that was, um, I mean... <laughs> That was that was some of my most favourite moments on the show was, was going filming those foreign features where we would just go to America and Japan and just rip the piss out of people. <laughs> <laughs> they probably had absolutely no idea what you were about, you know. What the hell was going on here? <laughs> None whatsoever. None whatsoever. <laughs> Good stuff. Um I mean I certainly enjoyed I actually enjoyed when games attack even more than Games Master. I think just because you'd you turned the laddish kind of humour up from eleven up to 13 and a half, you know, so... I think there was, there was a lot, there was complete freedom in that, and I thought we had some, we had some really good ideas, getting the page three girls to do dance stage yes. mega mix. Yes, was, still in my thunder here, though, mate. yep, I was just going to say, the page three birds competing on, was it Dance Dance Revolution? Yeah, that's it, Dance Dance <laughs> Was a, stro- a stroke there, uh, of genius, I'm guessing that was your idea. Uh, quite literally a stroke. <laughs> Genius. Um, I can't remember if that was mine or, or Johnny Finch's. I mean, Johnny came up with so many of the, the great ideas for Games Master, as did the director, yeah. uh, Steve Wright. It was definitely Johnny's idea to have uh, Queenie and Cugly, the two, like, teddy oh, yeah. bears. Because yeah. they, they were his actual childhood teddy bears. Is that right? Yeah. And, that was it. and I thought <laughs> it was the sweetest idea from him, and we had so much fun. You know, it's, this is what, what, I, what I love about about this industry and there's there's a lot to hate and it's it's a it's a really yeah industry to kind of carve out a career in and there's lots of ups and downs but the the best thing about it is you you keep falling into these situations where you get to work with just unbelievably funny creative people yeah yeah and and i just i'm you know i've been so lucky over the years to, to, to keep falling in with them and and it's just it's great you know yeah just a, a total total fun good stuff yeah. so did you, did you ever manage to pull any of the birds <laughs> um, I um, to see the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> what can I? Uh, I, uh, I I dated brief one of the angels um, and uh, Helena from uh, the Dark Haired Angel. Oh, uh, dated her well. She was a lovely girl, and um, I, uh, I I may have had a night out with Joe Guest, um, and uh, she was a lovely girl as well. Fantastic, excellent. <clears throat> Obviously, you had the was it the pre-evolution challenge? 
um, various foreigners and English people. I was gutted that Tosh McKinley wasn't asked to appear, but that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do you know what's so funny is that I think that um, because of the success of the dance stage mega mix thing, I think people forget there was actually a football <laughs> chat on that show. <laughs> Who actually won it? Was it not the Italian guy or something won it? I think. I can't remember. I remember uh, having a lot of fun. Yeah. With who was the guy? And I kept calling him Pretty Boy. Oh, um, I remember. I can't remember his name. Uh, I came, and there was all these jokes about I was joking about him being gay, and then I think later on it turned out he was gay. <laughs> it's like, that's so, I was so embarrassed, because I wouldn't have done that if I'd known he was gay, because that's just phobia. <laughs> and I was like, I'm really sorry. You know? <laughs> uh, so listen, Don, I'm conscious of time running on. If you've got another five minutes, we'll just crack on very quickly with these last few okay. questions. No worries. No worries. Excellent. Um, have you what happened to the sheepskin jacket? Have you still got that? Uh, I won't have it now. I had it until recently. I had it when I was in Nova Scotia, but we have uh, we have moved so many times, and uh, because of the the radio stuff over here, <laughs> yeah. that we've just shed more and more and more stuff all the time. So the sheepskin jacket is no more. Oh, so no. Shop, so um, hopefully some uh, some person who needs it more than me is uh, <laughs> wandering around in that sheepskin jacket now. So Cug- Cugly and Queenie, they were obviously the icons. Of the, they were the sort of the defining icons of when games yes. attack. They were like energy drinking, staffy owned, tattooed hoodie fraternities dealing <laughs> drugs and whatnot. Um, wait, well, you've just told me where they came from. Are they are they now in landfill or a charity box or you know? No, no, no. Johnny, no, Johnny Finch has got them. He's he got was them back again. Good. Oh yeah, because they were his like they were his childhood things, and he, he would actually die. I used to keep hiding them from him, and he would lose his shit completely. <laughs> Cugly gone, but no, no. I would have loved to have, to have actually come out with a, a range of Queenie and Cugly plush toys if, uh, if the show had, you know, had gone on and everything. But uh, no, they were great. That was that was a great idea. Yeah. And you know, it's like it's 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 like everything else. Just uh, what the comedy in that is just you 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 take two contrasting elements and you put them together. So we had cup toys doing drugs and selling drugs. It's just it's, it's brilliant. <laughs> So they never actually got harmed in the in the making of that, that uh, feature. Oh, not at all. They're you know but, addicts now. They're in recovery. But <laughs> good delight to hear that. Um, sadly, it only lasted one series. What was the yeah. reason for that? Do you know? Honestly, I cannot even remember. That <laughs> was uh, for me. That was the um, the nadir of my uh, experimental drug phase. And I, I, you know, I mean. Joking aside, I, uh, I, it's, it's a bit hazy, that, that, yeah. that me, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, I started to kind of straighten my shit out after that. So I honestly, it's terrible to say, I honestly cannot remember. I can't remember, yeah. It's much the same way as Channel 4 forgot to cancel Games Master. <laughs> I have forgotten why they cancelled when Games Attack. No idea. <laughs> I mean, maybe they didn't. Shit, maybe I'm just really, really late. For I'm just like you're a bit late, I. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you still get time to play video games with the kids and you play a bit of Xbox 360? Or? I, yep, I do. I'm a, a absolutely, I'm a hopeless FIFA addict and I hate myself for it because I hate the FIFA franchise. Mm. I hate the way they release the game every year and it's bugged Aye. and bits of it don't work. And I hate the amount of money I spend on those fucking packs <laughs> on FIFA Ultimate Team. I'm a, I, you know, it's like... But playing FIFA is like um, it's like that that really dirty girl back at school that everyone had, and you and you would you know you would cop off with her, and you would be like, oh great, but then you'd feel really dirty. That's what I feel like every time I play FIFA. But I play it pretty much every friggin' day. I also um, what I do now is I go back whenever I see like great games from a couple of years ago that are down to like about five ninety nine. I download them on Xbox and I play through them. So I just played through, um, oh, jeez. Oh, what's the name of it? <sighs> the guy, f- the first game is the guy's wife and kid get killed. He's the Oh, lay, aye, eh, fuck it, what's it called? The guy has got a beard and he, yeah. Anyway. Last, last of Us. No, not Last, no, actually, I, I, I got Last of Us. That's I excellent. Playing. I started playing Last of Us and I loved it, but I got to the one bit and it's near the start, but it was like about four different kinds of zombies and some kind of underground thing. And I, it took me like about three or four goes and I still hadn't got past it. And I've got no patience now with games. <laughs> so I, I took the huff 
with The Last of Us, uh, which was a shame. And um, so, what is it? I also started playing recently um, uh, Bioshock Infinite. I started oh, playing yes. that. I played that myself, I. Thought that world was beautiful, the world they created. But see, the problem is, is that the time thing with he, my kids, now, like my oldest kid is 16, and so it's all about, and you know this, Alan, it's all about trying to get out of college just now. Yeah, and of course. Kids are so selfish. They take up a lot of your game time. <laughs> they really do with their needs. You know, like education and, and feed me and buy me clothes, you know? So it's them. Um, so I, because when I get into a game, I, I've got to finish it, right? I will sit and just play yeah, it and play it and yeah. finish it. And that's how there's a lot of games that I just, uh, unless I've got like a vacation time for a week, then I, I daren't even start playing them. Because you're, um, you're not going to get time to finish it. Aye, aye. It's like all the GTA games, I'm, I'm, I'm buying them on the first day, playing through them, you know, uh, stuff like Call of Duty and everything. Once I start playing them, I'm absolutely hooked. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's dangerous. And it's also bad with kids like my wife, goes mental if I'm playing uh, GTA 5 when the kids are around um, for I... reasons <laughs> and, um, I... <laughs> and it's a, cause that's got that's got worse because I remember playing GTA 4 um, with my oldest kid watching all the time and and, uh, and I thought that was alright but GTA 5 it's just it's... like a level of nasty darkness I, I, I. I must admit GTA 5 is the first kind of GTA game I've actually played uh, and to be honest with you I mean I actually I like just, you know, I don't play, I don't have a chance to play video games very often, but I'll actually just put it on, I'll think, right, I'm going to steal a motorbike, and I'm going to drive up to the top of that hill, then I'm going to drive down and go for a swim, kill a guy in a motorboat, and I just fucking do things, I was actually chilling out on a beach, and you could, the water was coming in, and this is, this is fucking amazing, you know, it's, it's incredible. It's great, and I, I love what they've done in, just in terms of a fully immersive sandbox lifestyle mm -hmm. that they managed to create in those games. It's absolutely fantastic. Max Payne! That's the game! Oh, Max Payne. Oh, that's the one. Aye, aye. Max Payne 3 I just finished, um, and that was like me for three straight days playing that, and I thought that was a phenomenal game. Is it, what, what, uh, what, uh, what was that in Dominic? Is that the Xbox, Xbox 360? Oh, yeah. you have a look for that. Yeah. Like, Max it, was like, it, was, it, was, it was like 7 or something like that. Aye, Oh, fantastic. So, uh, Spectrum or Commodore 64? Spectrum. Uh, I believe, in fact, I knew the answer to that one. I believe uh, Penetrator. <laughs> that was the first game your wife, uh, your wife that your, your mum bought for your Spectrum. Is yeah. that correct? You could tell there was obviously a sense <laughs> of destiny in that. My entry into the world of video games was the biggest double entendre title in the history of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Pe Penetrator, and uh, the second one was uh, Horace Goes Skiing, which was just so shite. <laughs> <laughs> People bought that. Horace Goes Skiing, what an absolute load of Easy. fish it was. <laughs> and, and then from then, uh, Manic Minor and Jet Set yeah. Willie, Pajama Rama, Daily Thompson's Decathlon. I mean, all those games were just brilliant on the spectrum phenomenal yeah. i mean I, I still like a lot of my sort of the retro or i don't even call them retro games because they're not retro to me they're just games yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but, you know some of the i still love the, the games are just so easy to play um and you know they're sort of can you pick up type thing you know so yeah yeah Stops. oh yeah and all, all those kind of ultimate games attic attack and saber wolf and head over heels are just brilliant the, the amount of what was great about that time was that technology didn't really increase very quickly mm -hmm. on that front for a couple of years so they actually had to squeeze every little bit they could out of these tiny machines That's and as a result the kind of the creativity the likes of your jeff minter and his attack of the mutant llamas and things like that yeah and what's interesting is i think that we're now finally getting back to that level of quirkiness because of uh, all the app games that people are making on phones, you know, in the, in the independent section, which is fantastic just now. That's right. I mean, one of my mates, actually, I, I, in fact, I interviewed him last week. He's actually written a game called The Wicked Father. And basically, he, uh, it's on the Atari 2600 or Atari VCS, as we called it. It's got something like 1K memory. And this game, he basically, the, the father kills his children and he's got to escape um, without drowning. He tries to, he turns the tap on and he's going to drown. And this thing's got music, it's got the graphics, and it's like, it's written in, uh, what he said to me was, uh, apparently when you open a Word document with nothing on the screen, that's mo that's probably four times as much memory as this bloody game takes up. Oh. It's incredible. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Good stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, obviously, when games attack, I'm not even thinking that was kind of the last foray into the world of video games, Dominic. Eh? Yep, that, that was it. The last, the last one. 
Yeah, then obviously you, you helped launch was it XFM Scotland in 2006, I think it was, yep. and you won two awards, the Scottish Radio Presenter of the Year Award, and yep. the Scottish Radio Awards, sorry, um, yeah, and then later the Sony Radio Award in 2007. Uh, well, I got, I got fourth in that, I was, I was on the shortlist, I didn't, I didn't win, I think Chris Evans, Chris Evans might have won it that year. Chris, but, uh, Chris who? Sorry, who? <laughs> ah, I can't hear, never heard of the guy. Um... <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I must admit, I loved, I'm, I'm a bit of a rocker, you know, uh, I like my heavy metal and that kind of stuff, and um, I mean, I loved, I loved the channel, I mean, it had a real kind of humorous, edgy kind of flavour to it, uh, yeah. and the, the music was obviously firmly in the indie rock type category, yeah. with, uh, as you've said yourself, people playing guitars when you can actually hear them, I mean, that, so that launched, you were the kind of behind a lot of the, the kind of fratellis and that kind of stuff, getting their kind of first uh, real kind of exposure, is that right? No, totally. But that's one of the, the the things I'm the most proud of was is how we, yeah, Fratelli's, Biffy Clyro, uh, the views, the views, well, yeah, the most fantastic time for Scottish music, and uh, it was just, it was just thrilling, absolutely thrilling, to be part of that. It was the best time we could have possibly been in, and even outside of Scotland, bands like Kasabian and all that just yeah. coming up time. It was just oh, just the excellent time for Brit for for Scottish music. It was, and it was the first time since Games Master it was the, that I'd had that level of fun, aye, aye. Th- and that kind of level of of kind of uh, of creative fulfilment, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, and then some dickhead boss came in and ruined it all. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Like, so I must have, I was gutted. I, mean, I can't remember. The, the, I mean, the guy that took it over was he not for like Orkney or something? Oh yeah, Julian Sinclair. Uh, I mean, he was he was he was quite a decent bloke, but he wasn't yourself. I mean, obviously, you know, yeah. it was, okay. when when you left, it was uh, again, it was just, you know, it was it was very very sad. So good stuff. So you've lived in Canada now, Dominic, for uh, six years. Um, how Aye. do you find presenting Canadian radio differs from like UK stuff? You obviously don't get Andy Cameron adv- advertising Larry's laminates and things like that. <laughs> no, no, you don't. I think uh, I'm I'm very. I'm very fortunate that I'm not sure if it's always been like this. Or I, 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 there's a lot of space given to personality in Canadian radio, mm-hmm. a lot more than you would get in Britain. It's the industry is in a lot healthier state. Where I mean, I look at like you know XFM, which has just come back to Scotland now, and it's basically just it's two guys. It's just Fraser in the morning and Jim Geltley in the afternoon, and everything else yeah. is run from from England and the, the lack of money in radio in Scotland is shocking. Is really? No yeah. to live on it. Um, whereas here, I, I, I'm lucky that I've um, I've I've just had a, a really kind of quick rise up, thanks to a couple of bosses who just really like British radio. Uh, and, and you know, and I think if you, I think things like Craig Ferguson uh, getting his chat show on American TV. Oh, aye, aye greatest thing for Scottish accents in the North American continent. I think he really opened up a lot of doors and I think this is how you know I'm I'm so glad to see the likes of James Corden getting a gig over here and you know, aye, aye. It, just, it means that they're much more open to, to, to the accent. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, the it was, I mean, you know, every every Canadian thinks they're Scottish anyway. <laughs> Got Scottish heritage, so uh, so no, I, I found it. The um, it's been it's especially in Toronto. It's uh, the you know the accent goes down really well, and it's it's not um, uh, it's not been a problem, and it, it's it's been really good to to kind of start again. I never planned on starting again. I you know I came out here to uh, you know, yeah. have a farm, um, but then it just ran out of money. So, <laughs> but it's been good to you know I. I I, unfortunately, with Games Master, I mean, my my career, I basically started at the top and worked my way down. <laughs> it was it's been good to come over here and actually do it the proper way, actually, the opposite way. <laughs> and build it up this time. <laughs> I mean, I do I do tune in your channel. And it sounds to me like you're getting to play the music that you like. It's good, yeah, no, it's yeah, good. yeah. And it's, a, stuff. it's a great country as well, Alan. I I mean, I, I love it. If the people are are so nice and there's a real kind of um there's it's very liberal it's very chilled it's very relaxed there's a lot of you kind know, of there's a lot of love in canada without sending too much of a hippie but people are just genuinely nice people, nice and people. It's, Listen, it's mate, but i've got no i mean i've been to america before but uh canada is probably the one country i would love to actually visit so oh you should they're great they're just, just they're so- i didn't know anybody that could put me up for a couple of weeks but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, Dominic, the very final question, uh, if geography and money wasn't an issue, i.e. a blank cheque, would you ever consider a return to Games Master? <laughs> Do you know what? Um, I I would not, and I'll tell you yeah. why. 
because I think the uh, I think every time someone asks me that, it makes me more firmly say no because the pressure <laughs> to not fuck it up. <laughs> Would be enormous, and I think it's very rare that you uh, you're able to do something and it finishes with a with a pretty much unblemished uh, record. I, uh, I would I would just hate to come back and it not be as good as. Uh, and I think that the, the level of criticism yeah. that you can get thanks to social networking in such a short space of time, I think it's it's horrible doing anything new. And just the idea that we would do it, and within the first five minutes of the first show, that it's trending, Games Master's shit now. That's the shit. <laughs> I don't, I, my fragile ego couldn't handle that. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, Dominic, I've taken up uh, exactly 30 minutes more than I was uh, they were, you know, I was hoping to take up with your time. I really, really appreciate you taking time to talk to me, mate. Obviously, because it's some Scottish... Um, I know you don't do many of these interview things, so... Uh, I, I, I put you for the marathon training schedule. So no, but, uh, how's the running going? Are you, have you, are, you still, are you still doing any training yourself? Done. Not, the winter here has been so horrific, Alan. I've yeah. not been out there running over three months. Because it's been like minus 36 with wind chill and everything here. And because, because Toronto, we get a lot of wind off the lake... So I, I don't mind it being cold, but it's running into a cold wind, and it just fucks your throat up. I, find that, I mean, it's maybe minus three, but yeah, I find, I mean, I can go out for a run, and it can be like 10 degrees, and there's a really ice-cold wind, and it just yeah. kills me, and then I can go, and it's like minus two, and there's no wind, and it's absolutely fine. It's, it seems yeah. to be the, the cold wind sort of thing, so. And listen, Dominic, thank you very, very much for taking time. I'll, uh, I'll post you the link to this uh, once I've got it up uploaded. And uh, right. thank you very much. All the best for the, the for the future, chap. And uh, you take care. All right, you too, Al. Nice talking. Cheers, Dominic. Cheers, mate. Thanks, man.